Hello everyone. In today's exciting session, I'll discuss about VXLAN. VXLAN, also known as Virtual Extensible Local Area Network. At its most basic level, VXLAN is a tunneling protocol that tunnels Ethernet layer 2 traffic over an IP layer 3 network. It is an extension to Virtual Local Area Network or VLAN. It encapsulates a layer 2 Ethernet frame into a UDP packet and then transmits this packet over a layer 3 network. VXLAN is a formal internet, internet standard specified in RFC 7348. If you go back to the OSI model, VXLAN is another application layer protocol based on UDP that runs on port 4789. So why do we need VXLAN? As we know, the traditional layer 2 networks have issues due to below three main reasons. Starting with spanning tree. Spanning tree blocks any redundant links to avoid loops. Blocking links to create a loop-free topology gets the job done, but it also means we pay for the links we can't use. The second reason is limited amount of VLANs. The traditional VLAN identifiers are 12 bits long, which means we can create only 4094 VLANs. As the data center scale increases, the number of tenants increases sharply, uh, requiring isolation of large number of tenants. The VXLAN protocol overcomes this limitation by using a large, uh, a longer logical network identifier that is 24 bit, which allows more VLANs and therefore more logical network isolation for large network, such as cloud that typically include many virtual machines. Third reason is large MAC address tables. Before server virtualization, a switch only had to learn one MAC address per switch port. With server virtualization, we run many virtual machines or containers on a single physical server. Each VM has a virtual NIC and a virtual MAC address. The number of addresses in the MAC address table of our switches has grown exponentially. The switch has to learn many MAC addresses on a single switch port. A top of the rack or TOR switch in data center could connect to 24 or 48 physical servers. A data center could have many racks, so each switch has to store the MAC address of all VMs that communicate with each other. We require much larger MAC address tables. Uh, we require much larger MAC address table compared to network without server virtualization. Next, let's look at VXLAN benefits. VXLAN technology allows you to segment your network as VLAN do, but it provides benefits that VLANs cannot. You can theoretically create as many as 16 million VXLAN in an administrative domain as opposed to 4094 VLANs. You can enable migration of virtual machines between servers that exist in separate layer 2 domains by tunneling the tra traffic over layer 3 networks. The functionality allows you to dynamically allocate resources within or between data centers without being constrained by layer 2 boundaries or being forced to create large uh, or geographically stretched layer 2 domains. Using VXLANs to create smaller layer 2 domains that are connected over a layer 3 network means that you do not need to use spanning tree protocol to converge the topology, but can use more robust routing protocols in the layer 3 network instead. In the absence of STP, none of your links are blocked, which means you can get the full value from all the ports that you purchase. Using routing protocols to connect your, your layer 2 domains also allows you to load balance the traffic to ensure that you get the best use of your available bandwidth. VXLAN has become the mainstream technology for constructing data center networks because it can meet the requirement of dynamic virtual machine migration and multi-tenancy in data center network. That's it about VXLAN. Thank you for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe.